All right, um, let's get into it, I guess. Um, first thing you want to do is get yourself a profile made. And I'm going to go through the settings that are as relevant as possible. Um, follow camera, you definitely want to turn it off. Um, as it can actually lead to uh, some crashing involved with lightning. At least we think that's what causes it. Subtitles, you kind of need to be, have them off. Tutorials are also a must-have off. Guildmaster help, that's optional. But, um... And because he can, um... He can scream at you, say that your health is low, your will energy is low, or your health is critical. Either way, you can actually turn him off in Lost Chapters, which is nice. But, uh, that's entirely preference. I personally have him off. Uh, video settings are pretty relevant because, and I'll actually show off why they're relevant, but um, for the purposes of this video and for personal preference, I've been running the game at uh, 720p lately. Um, graphic de uh, yeah, graphic settings are pretty much as your system can handle them, um, except for effects details. That one's just kind of... Um, like, you can set it to one higher than default, and it will be fine, but anything like max, and you're gonna see a lot of flickering in different places. <coughs> but, again, they're pretty much just as your system can handle them. But I, I personally leave effects at default. Um, audio, I mean, I, I usually just want to make sure that I have everything audible. Um, especially sound and dialogue, those are going to come into play. Music comes into play a bit in the arena as well, but it's kind of, uh, it's a, I don't know. I'll explain when I get there. Uh, key bindings is a pretty large thing. Um, I think the majority of runners at this point would highly recommend rolling with a key as opposed to middle mouse, just simply because, um, it's a lot easier. And you actually sacrifice a bit of your uh, mouse control with um, middle mouse as your roll button. Most runners, I think, use R. I personally use E because I'm a weird guy. I also take flourish off of right click because I personally like to be able to actually... Um, um, what was I going to say? Um, sprint. Because running, well, that's kind of... It's not really a run. Not really, not in this game. You don't really run too much. It's more of a jog, but... Anyway. I do. Another big thing is you want to take Suck Experience Orbs and Activate Spell Mode off of the same key. I do that by having um, Suck Experience Orbs as Shift and Spell Mode as Control. It's all preference-based, but you definitely want to have them... Um, separate from each other. <clears throat> and then, here's the odd thing that I personally do, um, as well as a few other runners. It makes uh, the very first spell that we learn easier to get. Um, and it's all, again, this is all on which keys you have it on. They are entirely your preference, but um, the first spell that we learn, Assassin Rush, is going to show up on um, hot bar item 8. But we don't want to reach over all the way over to 8, and then we also don't exactly want to spend too much time, um, you know, navigating the menu and dragging it from one hot bar uh, spot to the other. Because menuing is a bit, uh, it's not the best thing in this game. <coughs> but, um,. I don't know. Maybe for the preference, of, for the for the purposes of um, this tutorial, and for the sake of actually just learning the run, you can go ahead and leave it as default. But actually, I think I'll just go ahead and do that. Leave it as default, but I'll need to remember to actually move things over. I think that's all the settings. Gameplay. Yep, those are good. Those are good. And I just did those, so yes, those are good. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into it. <coughs> Alright. First thing you probably want to do is make yourself a quick little hero save. This is so you actually have a profile set up and everything. 
First thing you're going to want to get yourself used to is movement. And, uh, well, for the purposes of childhood, it's actually six seconds faster if you have optimal rolls. Which I found recently, and it's pretty surprising that it's such a low number, but um, it's something you want to practice. It's not something you're going to just easily get overnight. Gotta sink quite a bit of time into learning the rhythm of things. But it helps to, like, just get yourself familiar with uh, the tech. Just do a lap or two around Oakvale until you feel comfortable with it. It's kind of... Back rolling is going to come into play a little bit as well. Although I think some runners just kind of, after they're done talking to people, they just do backwards punches. I'm not exactly sure which one's faster. I just personally go with what I know. And let's say you want to actually go ahead and reset a run for whatever reason. <clears throat> you want to make sure you quit out of the game before you load the save. And I'll actually, I'll go ahead and show you why. Why we do that. Alright. So let's say I'm going to start a run, right? Never mind this bad movement. This is interesting. Usually, um, if you see down there where the... Uh, you can maybe see where the triangle and the cone that it's looking in is pointing. Just that dude down um, right around in this part on the map when I put it back up. Normally, when you load a save from within the game, he'll actually start wandering away from the place, and that's not the best thing to have happen. I want to try and show that off if I can. He's not being too compliant today. That's really weird. Okay, well, he usually starts wandering, and that's usually why we rec we always recommend just quitting out of the game first. Going back to the main menu and then loading the save. So the first place you want to go to is over across this bridge, down the hill, and to beat up the bully. Because this section is pretty much all about movement. Um, hello? Did I not bind that? I thought I did. Oopsie daisy. That's important. Make sure you have your key binding set up, right? Okay. Uh, you'll eventually also learn um, how different cutscene skips work. Some of them are fading, some of them are just instantly cutting back into gameplay. Um, the majority of the ones here in Oakvale are, I don't know, they're kind of mixed, actually. Um, I just completely blazed past what I wanted to, what I should have talked about there. <clears throat> this might take a while, so bear with me. Ah, right, that's a good example, too. Sometimes if you are unlucky, and you are a happy escape masher... Game volume is actually pretty low. Okay. Hopefully that's a little bit better. But yeah, if you are sometimes unlucky and a happy escape master, you can sometimes get a wonderful glitch called No Skip Glitch. It's not the best thing in the world, trust me. Best thing I can do uh, in an actual run setting if you're running with the auto splitter is to just. Um, Go ahead and sit through it, and then quit out and reset the run. So you can just go ahead and mash escape through here. Left click twice. And then as you're traveling back down this path and up towards your house, you should come across a little girl at some point. I want to go ahead and just press the one key and give her the teddy bear. There's like three things you need to click through there. Go ahead and talk to your dad here. Um, basically hit 
um, your interact key or left click twice. And then here, um, interesting thing you can do, you can actually, I did it earlier as well, but you can actually alternate with your interact key and left click. And you can just blaze through dialogue, and that's actually important, um, why do you have subtitles off, because if you don't have them off, I'll go ahead and show you what happens. It's not as fast, because you're actually loading up the subtitles before you're actually able to skip them. The actual, like, dialogue bits. That's why you want, tutorial, you want subtitles to be off. If it's your first run, don't worry about getting caught by that guard. Just master his dialogue and get just get on your way. <clears throat> also, sometimes when you're coming with really sharp turns, it is actually not a terrible idea to just roll or run rather, because um, rolling animations can take a little while. So it should be pretty self-explanatory when I do it. Uh, here you want to actually tell her no, and then press 1, give her the chocolates directly. It actually saves a second. A literal second. That is not a lie. So, in normal runs, for like optimal runs, we would be using a hero save and load glitch. But for your first runs, you definitely don't want to do that, because if you happen to come across anything that could potentially kill your run, it will actually kill your run. And um, all your progress would essentially be lost. And nobody wants to deal with that for their very first few runs. And really, you don't even want to do that until you're pretty well comfortable and seasoned with the run. Uh, I want to hard target Whisper and Punch her a couple of times. Trust me, it feels good, but there's actually a point to it. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Basically, want to just follow the same path that I'm taking here. Also, um, I was going to talk about earlier with uh, graphics options and why I have them at a bit of a lower res. Um, it's for the purposes of menu navigation. Now, I'm going to go ahead, since I'm actually running the game in a forced 720p window, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to 1080p, show you why it's, yeah, there's a lot of screen in here. So, um, like with hotbars and stuff, all the way down here, all the way down here. Look at how much extra, how many extra pixels I have to travel in order to move things around. That's why we run the game at a lower res. It's because the menu elements do not scale with the resolution. They are the exact same size. See, now that's a whole lot, that's a lot less pixels than I need to travel to uh, move things around. That's why we do that. Uh, the other most commonly run resolution is uh, 1024 by 768, which is the default resolution for Lost Chapters. Pretty self-explanatory stuff here. You just beat up the dummy with your fists and your uh, your stick. Well done, lad. Pick up that experience hard to progress. <clears throat> now to get bugged by beetles. Best thing I can give you as far as advice with these guys go is just be patient. Don't try to swing every single second. Don't be just swinging at random. You want to make sure that your swings hit, essentially. Because there's a lot of time that can be lost on beetles. Get out of bed, lazy... Here I just go ahead and run pretty much till I'm there, and then I start rolling. Then I take an actual sharp turn around this corner. One 
thing I should probably mention as well, um, if it's not obvious, you definitely should be skipping cutscenes anyway, but it's important that you skip the uh, cutscene leading up to where you go to punch Whisper, because that actually will affect the day cycle. If you let that cutscene play. Pay attention. Okay, here there's actually a very specific pattern that we do that's super consistent, and it's probably one of the only consistent things about Whisper. Um, what we want to do is we want to um, immediately hard target, block, roll, roll, yeah, roll, block, roll, block, do not roll, let her hit you again. Rather, that was not the best example because I got a side roll in there. I'll do it over though. That was pretty optimal, actually. A good good example of an optimal duel against Whisper. Well, let's try that again. I'll go ahead and repeat that, just to get the you can put that old. good block pattern in. Now pay attention. Dismiss that. Hard target. Roll into her. Block. Roll. Block. Roll. Block. Block, roll, block. There you go. That's how that's supposed to look, more or less. There she flipped backwards, so I'm just gonna hit her three more times. Back off, okay. She could have flipped again, but um, yeah. You just kinda play her by ear. <clears throat> just talk to the guild master. You don't have to wait for him. You can actually just go there. I actually don't have to hold these arrows back for too long, which is pretty surprising. I still get amazed by how short of a duration I need to pull it back for. Um, I use a visual cue usually. It's when I see the um, top of the bow actually start to bend backwards. Now here, because we don't really want to shoot these dummies over and over, I'm just going to shoot this dummy instead. And I literally just cut off a minute of time. Um, now the way that works, and that's actually part of why we punched Whisper actually, we were storing some aggressive actions, which normally would send you to Maze's Tower for a good old lecture. You shouldn't be doing this. Um, but when you have a test timer going, for some reason it just skips it and lets you progress. Next, we will learn about the ways of the it's a pretty beautiful thing. It's time to look now here it's important that you actually cast lightning first, because that'll get the timer going. It's, like, actually super important that you cast lightning at some point before you get that fourth hit in. Very good, lad. Just go ahead and spam left-click there. Before you graduate. A lot of these things are pretty self-explanatory, but, um... Hopefully I'm doing an okay job at explaining the uh, things that aren't super obvious. Ah, that was unfortunate. That's fine, though. So sometimes you can get lucky and Maze will teleport pretty close to you, and sometimes you can actually catch him in the combo and then combo him in the back. Now, on here, if you're playing at higher, like, effects and such, better graphic settings, you want to make sure that you're not too close to him when you uh, get to the lightning phase, because the cutscene can actually lag a little bit. And it does eat up a little bit of time. Now, uh, the way I was handling those lightnings was, uh, I was not just channeling it, right? I was actually casting individual strikes and resetting the, uh, the cast every single time I got a successful hit in. That's also going to take some practice. Let the op it's time for you to... All right, now here is probably the very first major thing that you're going to want to learn here. Um, first of all, we're going to get we're going to be learning this spell here, Assassin Rush. But uh, a little bit more than that, we're actually going to be getting not just Assassin Rush one, but Assassin Rush rank two. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to confuse the game by um, basically trying to refund it and buy it back again as soon as possible. And we do that. Um, 
Notice your experience. Okay, so you want to buy Assassin Rush 1, but um, you want to get to... You want to try and refund it, but you want to do it very specifically, so... So what the fuck did I just do there? Um, basically, I was refunding it really quickly, faster than the game could actually technically process it. And I was actually rebuying it all within that same span. Um, I'll go ahead and um, try and show off what I mean. Uh, there is actually a bit of a frame in here where the dialog box hasn't fully rendered in. And then we also want to just be spamming D. And that's actually another thing. You can actually navigate the menu with the keyboard. So optimally we want to be using both mouse and the keyboard, so the way we do that. Yeah. You can like effectively just spam refund and then and D as well. And you'll you should be able to get it at some point. It's not the hardest thing in the world. Unless you actually have a really beefy computer. In which case it can be pretty difficult because the uh menu loads up a lot faster. Um since I had my mouse cursor over here, and it wasn't on any of these menu items, it actually defaulted to the top. In most cases, it will default to the top. In some situations, like in specific teleports, um, the game will actually just teleport you to the most relevant option, which can be convenient at times. Mostly in the any percent run, they are completely convenient, and you definitely want to take advantage of them. Um, and I'll try to point those out as we go along. In other categories, it can be um, not the best thing to have. But we don't need to worry about that. Oh, right, okay. So, I, I, like I said, I was like I said earlier, I'm used to having um, my 3 and 8 keys swapped in functions. So, I just had to swap that over. So now we are incorporating Assassin Rush into our movement going to be rolling after a successful Assassin Rush. And then there are also times where we don't want to be using Assassin Rush. And that's if we're going to be rushing somewhere that is not forward. You'll get a feel for that. Um, if you're targeting um, objects like signposts or bramble bushes or barrels, um, those will not affect your um, Assassin Rush direction. If you're targeting NPCs, though, that will affect it. That includes friendly and hostile. So, um, right, uh, Wasp Menace. First thing you want to do after we get rid of this prompt, use Lightning. Get rid of that Wasp. Use Lightning on that Wasp, and then melee these ones. Want to try and get as many cleaves as you can. That just shortens the time. Pull your bow out. Skip the cutscene. Hard target the Wasp Queen immediately. If there are any wasps that are flying over that sundial, you can actually roll past them. You won't take any damage. And that's an example, actually, of why I say to take suck experience orbs off of your um, activate spell mode key. Keep them separated. That's so you can remain mobile and still doing actions other than spells. Wasp Queen's pretty easy. Um, admittedly, you want to make sure that you don't let her strafe over in this direction because it'll she can take a lot longer to spawn in more wasps. And that's actually something she needs to do before you can damage her beyond that first uh, shot with the arrow. And should you actually miss that shot with the arrow, it just takes three swords, sword strikes and you'll be good to go. But don't let her strafe over to your left. It can consume a bit of time. <clears throat> Alright, so admittedly I'm not the most well-versed with um, Assassin Rush 2 yet, still. It's still kind of weird to me, after so many years of using Assassin Rush 1. Um, another thing you're going to be keeping an eye on is your mana total. Just want to get to Bowerstone South there. Alright, now we're gonna do some uh, 
economy breaking. First, we're going to sell our health potions and res files. Then we are going to buy all of his apple pies and all of his grain sacks. I'm going to sell them back to him, and we suddenly have about 3,000 gold. We're going to finish off by buying some will potions, uh, fishing rod and spade. And if it's your first few runs, you can go ahead and get yourself a little bit more money. So you can possibly buy some, uh, like a couple of res files back, or maybe some health potions. That's all based on your preference. Over here. Been enjoying all the Talk to May, skip his cutscene. Gonna come talk to this bloke over here. Gonna sell your U longbow. And you're gonna buy the ebony longbow which is the third best weapon in the game. And for the purposes of your first few runs, I would personally recommend getting this Ages of Might potion from this house. Okay. And then, in the majority of cases, it's this will take some practice as well. Um, in the majority of cases, it'll be a lot safer and quicker to actually go ahead and... Um, Guild a menu your guild seal as opposed to charging it. So you can do that by hitting F4, going down to the, the guild seal in the menu, and then teleporting to the location you're going to, which is the guild. Now this one looks you're gonna take Protect Orchard Farm and Boast, and that will just immediately send you outside. That saves like a second or two of movement. Right click out of that. If you want to go for the Ages of Skill potion that's in this fishing pool, you're more than welcome to. I will be um, presenting a route that doesn't do that, though. <clears throat> so here's a good example of um, a room full of reasons not to use Assassin Rush. Unless you see that you are going to rush forward. Go ahead and grab these potions here. And in this chest is a Willmaster's Elixir, which will increase your maximum mana pool. Also, be more aware of me than, than I was just then when you're rushing. You may be targeting something, but if, some, if an object is in your way, then you're going to have your rush cut short, and it's going to look embarrassing. So, uh, wasps are pretty annoying for movement, because they move so quickly. If you have like one or two wasps following you, you can kind of evade them, or just outrun them. Kind of sad that I wasn't able to show off how you could do that, but... Um, yeah, it's something that takes practice. As with a good number of things. Alright, so you want to do some um, decent pulling back on your arrows here. I want to make sure to hard target this guy to make sure that my arrow does not just fly past him. And you're going to hard target these guards and zap them two or three times. And that'll prevent your combat multiplier from dropping, and this is a combat multiplier heavy section. You want to make sure you end with a good combat multiplier. So don't take any damage. And try not to let these guys kill any bandits from you. steal any bandit kills from you. Uh, the archers have 150 health, so you don't need to hold the arrow back as long as you need to for the melee ones. And once you've hit as good a combat multiplier as you're going to get here, go ahead and pop your Ages of Might potion. So, go on. Try to hit me with that, so you, that was unfortunate. Um, so you, you need to hit Whisper with a Flourish here to get her health bar to appear, but once you've done that, you're gonna just pull out your bow and shoot, arrow, shoot her full of arrows. Damn. Because she didn't quite learn how to block arrows yet. You have reached state. So the game would try to uh, suggest to you that you should go back to the guild 
get a new get the new quest card and such. Don't follow that advice if you have Guildmaster help on. He is very wrong. And he will lead you astray. Wow, that wasp. Did not want me to move forward at all. They can do that sometimes. They can actually get in front of you. Some bandits have set up a toll in this region. Be careful. Okay. This guy has some dialogue. We don't want to really sit through it at all. We also don't really want to trigger it. So just hard target, zap him, unhard target, be on your merry way. You want to make sure that you're ahead of enemies so that you're not rushing backwards because the soft target system actually does extend behind you as well as in front of you. Okay, and then we, I, we're we taking um, three spots off of our hotbar. Because we're going to be putting new stuff onto our bar. Grab... Uh, Trader Escort. Head into this menu. Allows you to do more damage in melee combat. And Going to be learning Physique 3. Speed, makes you quicker in both speed 2. And melee combat. Going to be learning Multi-Strike. Should be able to get Magic Power 2. Capacity for storing mana. Berserk 1. And Summon. I suppose I can also go ahead and pop that Willmaster's Elixir as well. And then we're going to be getting the wonderful Sword of Aeons. Now this is something that, um, when you're just starting out, it can take some practice. So what I try to do, I try to line myself roughly with um, the line that my toes are at. Use Summon. Kind of push your Summon into the stairs. Um, fail miserably, because of course. That's okay. You that even I have problems with it sometimes too. So, um, it may be a placebo, but it might not be. But, um, apparently, when you're not uh, highlighting your wasp, you s I, I've seemed to have a better time actually rushing behind it and into the floor here. But, um, like I said, that may or may not be a placebo. Go ahead and grab the Sword of Aeons, hit F5, and equip it. And then if you still have your Wasp out, uh, go ahead and hard target and kill it. To refresh its duration. So I wanted, wanted to give my Wasp a better chance of killing this hob here. And it's important that, um, yeah, you want your Wasp to become a hob or a bandit. If you have Wasps in the screen, just move on to the next area. He was working double time. That's interesting. But yeah, that area is guaranteed to have hobs in it. So if you did, if you did get wasps, or if you had bad luck with your summon, um, just press on and actually uh, go to yeah, just basically clear out all but one of the hobs in there and let your summon kill the hob that's left. Go ahead and let this guy follow you. Or you can tell him off. It doesn't really matter either way. We're going to be leaving this area with only one trader alive anyway. It's slightly faster to um, let him follow. That Balverine is not going to bother us at all. These mushrooms, however, they might. Um... <coughs> Just, if you're worried about that, just make sure you rush into the spores, because Assassin Rush will give you invincibility frames. And they will not affect you that way. You may have also been noticing I'm rolling twice with Berserk, and that's because I happen to be able to roll so quickly with Berserk that I can actually um, get two rolls off in the span of my Assassin Rush's cooldown. And I killed those guys because it's faster to just let this one guy left refollow 
than it is to have all three of them, or two of them. And the clear to go ahead and go through the next area is when you see that dot turn around. Now, it's, very, it's actually pretty important here that you don't go Berserk until roughly here. And then don't go Berserk again for pretty much the entirety of the screen. Point being is that uh, the Traitor will be scared of you and he will stay behind if you are Berserked coming into the screen. Don't go Berserk until you are in this fight. That was not the best example, but that's okay. Okay. And then, um, basically, I want to... Okay, let's see here. You want the Traitor's Dot to be roughly about where I'm standing here-ish, if, if not over here. before you actually go into the next zone. This is a click dialogue, so just left click once. Okay, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and use that bed there, sleep. Come over to this rock circle just a little bit outside of it, and this is a little bit finicky. Uh, use your spade. Get a golden carrot, and then immediately eat it. This is important because this... Um, golden carrots don't have an actual effect on the day cycle, so... Uh, what I mean by that is I st I'm still at an, essentially on day one. There haven't been any days gone by in the game yet. Well, you think we can do a offer for you, sir? And traders have some pretty decent numbers in stock at this um, uh, day in the game. So we're going to start off this menu like I already did by buying all perfumes and selling them back twice in a row. And we're going to move on to emeralds. Make sure we buy the will potions somewhere in the menu. And then buy sell the emeralds twice. Ah, there you are. And then once a game, one, one, once a game, the game, the game, once a game, the game will try to recommend that you go back to the guild. Uh, we're not going to be following that. This game really likes to lead you astray. Um, instead, we're going to be performing a wonderful little trick here, which I have a video on that I will likely leave in the description of this one. And using that, we're going to essentially break the entirety of um, the Find the Bandit Cirrus quest. And free up three spots on our hotbar. Break that barrel there for the Ages of Skill Potion. Come into Twin Blades camp, roll into the Hellas Gate, and go back to the guild. Grab the Bandit Cirrus, and go right back to Twin Blades. Like I said, I, I have a video going into uh, pretty good detail about how you can do decent setups for these summon clips that I'm doing. 
so I don't want to spend too much time talking about them here in this one. Go ahead and kill your hob here. Refresh its uh, summoning position. Because for some reason, um, a previously used summon for a summon clip doesn't like to um, just spawn in and stay facing in the same direction. It'll just like to turn around on you. And it's kind of annoying. You can either just wait it out and then summon it again, or you can just kill it. It's roughly about the same amount of time passage. Go ahead and rush behind Twin Blade and hit him in the back. Do it again. Personally, I like to just roll backwards, get him into the middle. Once I've here, once I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and go into Berserk and let him hit me. Okay. Now, the important thing about going into Berserk and letting him hit me there was Berserk actually increases your physical damage output as a baseline. On top of that, though. It will actually increase even further if you're hit while under the effects of it. So if done right, it can actually prove to be uh, pretty broken. And also, if you're worried about dying while in Berserk, do not worry about it. You are actually immortal while Berserk, and you cannot die. Nice couple of splits. It's okay. Don't have an actual timer running. Um, also, since we actually didn't technically start the quest proper, we were actually able to leave the area before the quest completion prompt came up. Go ahead and sell your Ebony Longbow, buy Master Longbow, and all of his Will Potions. You can be Berserk there, it really doesn't matter. In Routes of the Past, it actually kind of did matter. If he was scared of you, but... Not so much nowadays. Talk to Maze, go to Witchwood. Go ahead and break down those bramble bushes. Cat was meowing at me. Make sure you grab that Ages of Will Potion over by the barrel. So, optimally, there is a summon clip that you can do there, but I'm just going to go ahead and um, do this normally. Spell out the Demon Door's name. So. Because um, that summon clip is only good if you actually like first try it. So, Anything beyond that, and it's be uh, not super worth. Okay, that might be a bit of a lie, but still. Um, For your first few runs, I wouldn't really recommend going for that. The uh, Twin Blades uh, clips, though, I definitely recommend going for because it makes that whole quest a ton safer. You don't have to worry about getting chests while being swarmed by bandits. It's just a lot safer to summon clip your way into Twin Blades camp. Also, one of the wonderful effects of Berserk is your scariness is amplified, like, a lot. You are a scary, mean red dude, and you're just scaring the uh, populace of Albion. So that includes wandering traders, which can be a little bit annoying sometimes, but just kind of have to work with it. So here you want to take off um, two spots on your hotbar. 
because we're going to be filling it with one spell. And the reason for that, I will show you right here. Grab White Alverine. We're going to get ourselves Accuracy 3. We're going to learn Physical Shield. Now, when I exit this menu, I'm going to have two things on those spaces that I cleared. One will be Physical Shield, and the other one will be the Kiss My Ass expression. The game is literally telling you to kiss its ass if you do not pull off um, two spots there. So do be aware of that. You can throw a physical shield here if you want. One fully charged shot to this Balverine. Quickly look away from it. That'll spawn the other one. And then here, uh, the next two Balverines will spawn right over here. And you'll notice they're not spawning right now. Why is that? They don't like to spawn when they're on camera. They're camera shy, and I can't say I blame them. If you pick up an item there, it's actually not affect. It's, it doesn't affect the timing at time at all. You'll actually be able to skip the cutscene a little bit sooner. Uh, fastest way of dealing with these uh, hit counters is to just hit him with lightning a couple uh, the ten times. Shoot him there. That'll skip the howl animation. Because that takes like two or three seconds that you don't need to sit there and watch. Get over roughly to around that house. You'll spawn the white ball green again. Rinse and repeat with the ten hits. Pull your bow out for a person. You can actually let your bow loose and you'll, you'll still be charging the arrow even through the berserk animation. Uh, hit F5 to bring up your weapon menu. Augment your uh, augment your master longbow with your silver augmentation that you just got. Now, if it's your first few runs, there's actually a strategy I think um, Adam will be doing in his guide that involves essentially duping that silver augmentation. I'm not going to be doing that here. Actually, hold on. I want to hard target and multi-strike uh, the chief there to build a quick little combat multiplier. I'm pretty sure it's actually the multi-strike that does it. Multi-strike is a very weird spell with combat multiplier. And I'll explain a little bit more on that um, when we get to the arena. But if you have multi-strike, just don't make sure you don't have multi-strike active on your weapon when you're doing this. That was a good shot. There we go. <clears throat> I feel like my Balverine was actually facing in a weird direction that time. Go ahead and kill that other Balverine. And you want to make sure that you're doing fully charged shots to the white Balverine. And here you actually want a combat multiplier of 21. Go ahead and pop your will po your Aegis potions and teleport back to Nothole Glade so you don't have to travel all that extra distance from the entrance. You're a lot closer to um, quest completion via the Cullis Gate. Got two items. You just want to left-click through that. Um... I'm not used to having my bar set up in this way. I'm going to go ahead and just set up summon on those two locations. Or those three locations. Grab the arena. And then there are actually a few things that we're going to be doing here. With that menu glitch that we did earlier. In notes and in um, other places, you'll see it referred to as Hotshot Glitch, named after the guy who discovered it. Okay. So we're actually going to be uh, getting in Flame 4. Multi-Strike 3. And for safety, we're going to be getting Force Push 3 as well.
Okay, so here's the first example of the game actually being nice with an automatic selection. So I said earlier that in most cases the um, game will default to the top option. If you don't have your mouse in uh, this like actual menu area here. But as I've just demonstrated a couple of times now, it's all automatically on Nautil Glade. That's the first one. Okay, so this here is a nymph. People who've played Fable before, they, they know what nymphs are. They're annoying. If they aggro onto you, they, uh, they're fast travelers. Um, and they can really screw over your rushes at the most inopportune times. Talk to uh, this guy over here. Master his text. Or his dialogues. To the hall of Hera. We think we can do a special offer for you, sir. Okay. Buy will potions and uh, the silver augment. Augment the bow with another silver. And then uh, we had to pull a arrow back a decent amount before for a regular Balverine. That was a regular Balverine, and that's how long I needed to do that to kill him. If you can believe it, that's going to be roughly... maybe a, It's going to be a little bit longer of a pullback for white Balverines, because we're going to be fighting three more of them in here. But um, double silver, or just stacked silver. Really powerful against Balverines. And undead, but we're not going to be using that against the undead in here, unfortunately, because we have the inflame spell. So the reason I pushed Al over here is because it's just a little bit faster and more convenient to uh, spend this time literally waiting. You have to wait for the uh, there's a bit of a, an, a hidden timer, so to speak, waiting for Chameleon to die like a chicken in front of 5,000 people. But, um... <clears throat> yeah, you can, um... push this guy over here so you can talk to him faster without having to go up the stairs. Alright, and here comes the, uh... the hardest part for most new runners. And even some current, um... even current prospective runners. Once you see the wasps actually knock fully down, go ahead and use force push. Don't use force push too early against the wasps. They actually need to finish landing. You also notice, hey, I'm getting combat multiplier. How is that? Um Force push apparently doesn't check to see if um, the bodies that it hits are living or not. So it deals damage to corpses and grants combat multiplier accordingly. And that's why I wanted to get uh, force push three, because it's safer. This is another combat multiplier heavy section. And then here's inflamed floor. It's gonna be your best friend in the arena. Um, after the wasps, force push is going to be used to cancel a lot of animations. So, um, that hob right there, that take that one takes two inflames. So I actually canceled his knockdown animation with force push. And I'm going to be doing that again here. There we go. Inflame 4 is only slightly broken. 
Bernard, as, as I said, it's going to be your best friend here in the arena. The combat multiplier goal, by the way, is going to be about 200. Also, I'm going into Berserk because it makes, um... Two hundred, my bad. Um, like, a it, it's actually a hundred. I was confused. I was getting... Forgive me. Adam's right in chat. Oh, she made one jump. That's unfortunate. So yeah, Whisper can make these guys jump, so it's kind of best to make sure she gets tied up with Force Push if you can do that. White Valvarines fortunately never jump and they also never block you, which is really weird. But, um, yeah, that was that was a slip. 200. We're after at least 100 with multiplier, but with force push 3, it's odds are you're going to have a higher multiplier than that. The undead die, the regular undead die to 1 in flame. Bigger Undead, um, if you can hit them with Inflame while they're spawning in, they will actually take the damage, but uh, they won't get knocked down, which is really convenient. I'm talking to Whisper also to get rid of um, Berserk and reset the, uh, the timer, essentially, so I don't run out of Berserk at inopportune times. Canceling death animations with uh, Force Push again. If that doesn't quite tickle your fancy, you can also just multi-strike and uh, kill these guys that way. Yeah, right. So I'm also... You want to talk to Whisper once you start hearing the announcer do his dialogue, or if you can time it with the fanfare, that's an option as well. But uh, that can skip uh, announcer dialogues. Which is super handy. These four archer bandits will die to one in flame. These guys will die to two in flames. Want to keep Whisper tied up here. Want to get these guys gathered up. And then three in flames will dispatch them. Bit of a risky strat that you can do here. Actually, just stand in the middle of that blade. If you don't want to just go with the uh, in flames strategy that uh, current world record actually uses, which is admittedly a lot safer and uh, probably faster. But there are a lot of different strategies that you can employ. But um, you are going to have to stand in the blades at some point, and hopefully the game doesn't screw you over. Because sometimes it can actually deal extra damage. But um, that's essentially a really super broken way of um, utilizing the damage boosting effect of Berserk. Because for some reason, standing in the middle of those blade traps causes uh, multiple hits to occur at once. I wait until the announcer says one to go into Berserk. I stand in here for three hits. Get out immediately. Pay attention to your will mana here, your, your will total here. Multi-Strike 3 usually guarantees a fast time with it, but of course that's also going to take practice. Um, if you don't get them in a single cycle, um, you can actually just use Assassin Rush before the um, Rock Trolls um, finish looking around. And you can actually uh, force them to keep looking around. 
Arachnox is a bit of a bitch in this game. I have a video that uses um, the setup from an older route, but basically this, the concepts all still pretty much apply. How am I doing with experience? I think I'm pretty much okay on experience. Um, if you're not feeling too comfortable with your experience amount, you can just actually spam summon for a little bit. And that's why I have it on three different buttons. So you can just do this really easy. Now you gain three experience points of will per usage of summon, times your combat multiplier, times however many times you're pushing those three keys every second. So that's a lot of will experience that you can get really quickly. I personally just go ham on Arachnox's dying body and force push Whisper away to make sure she doesn't steal the kill. Go into Berserk immediately, rush behind her, use multi-strike, same thing, easy peasy. Put that weapon away, go to the door, leave the arena. Sadly, killing Whisper is slow. That was unbelievable. This is another convenient teleport, so I'm just going to go ahead and highlight that and then automatically go to Barrow Fields. The reason I put the weapon away was because um, here, actually, um, if you're in the middle of an animation, like, I, I just went to unsheathe my sword, and I... If you're, if you're in the middle of an animation and you go to use your guild seal, it's not going to work. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. Oops. But that's why I put the weapon away. Grab Rescue the Archaeologist. And then here you're pretty much going to be maxing out a bunch of stuff. So max physique, max speed, max accuracy... You already have Max in Flame, so max out Multi-Strike. Max out Force Push. I'm going to be Hot Shot Glitching in uh, Berserk 4. Getting Max Multi-Strike. And also, yes, Hot Shot Glitching does bypass alignment requirements. So if you are really feeling super uncomfortable with phys Physical Shield 3 for whatever reason, you can go with Maximum Physical Shield if you want. So it turns out the um, with force push three that uh, summon spamming I was doing really wasn't necessary at all. So that's kind of good to know. But that option is available to you if you don't feel super comfortable with your experience totals. How many will potions we have? We have 80, but if we're not feeling too comfortable, again, you have the option getting potions here. And you also have the option of buying and selling diamonds once and buying Solus Greatsword. If it's your first few runs, there is. Um, I personally would actually recommend doing that. Because it does make um, the last portion of the run easier. Even if it does cost a little bit of time up front. But for the majority of the rest of the game leading up to um, the first Jack of Blades fight, um, you're actually okay with sticking with Aeons because you have Berserk 4. I 
I have another clip that we can do here, but I'm going to forego it because it only saves five seconds in total. And for a first time runner, it's really not worth going for, unless you're feeling like that confident about it. And again, um, when, I, when, I, when I touched on with the beginning, um, the different levels of movement tech are things that are going to take time to get used to. And you want to make sure you practice them if you want to stick with the game for a while. Okay, so here it's actually important that you do go fast, because um, if you don't, you actually have to kill all the minions, essentially, in that screen. But since we were actually fast enough, we were actually able to just get away with killing those two minions by the archaeologist, and, um... Thankfully, it takes about roughly the same amount of time... Um... To manually... You know, use use um, Berserk and such... To leave that area, as it does to uh, warp out. So if you're not feeling comfortable with your movement, you can absolutely just go ahead and do that. And it's actually better for um, Lola's time to do that anyway. Which is actually what matters on the leaderboards, even though they don't currently reflect it because um, reasons. So yeah, welcome to Litchfield Graveyard. The undead are rising again, I told you. Or as some might call it, Bitchfield Graveyard. Or Litchfield Graveyard. Or God, why does this place exist in this game? Either or, um, everything I'm doing should be pretty much self-explanatory. You just need to get Nostro's armor, his helmet, his sword and his shield. For if you gather for him, a path he shall yield. Welcome to the only required fishing. Fishing is literally just red light, green light. It's the most intense game of red light, green light you'll probably ever play in your life. So if you want to go yellow, you can. Line can also snap. That was a, that was a wow. Okay, yeah. Try not to force push him because if you're berserked, it'll trigger a cutscene and you won't be berserked anymore. You also have the option, as with anybody essentially, of killing him as soon as you meet him. Although preferably not as soon as you meet him, because um, while you can kill him, grab a key off of him. Uh, it's faster to actually just trigger the cutscene and uh, let him open the gates for you. <clears throat> that was a super short cutscene, so there's no need to mash escape there at all. Okay, here you kind of want to just do what you can to get these guys to approach you. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Most of the time, in my case, they never do. Um, if you decide they're being too slow, you do have a backup option of inflaming them into the circle to get them to be vulnerable. Because oddly enough, that actually works. So what you want to do here is... Um, Inflame, immediately force push, and that's actually something I kind of failed to touch on in the arena. Um, 
you'll notice while I do have um, Inflame and Force Push on my hotbar, I wasn't actually using Inflame from my hotbar at all in the arena. I was doing it from spell mode. Um, reason being is that... Um, let, me tr let me actually just show you what I mean when I... Um, okay, let's see here. You can actually use Inflame and Force Push like immediately from the spell mode, essentially. But can't quite do that with um, Hotbar. Because you're... The Hotbar apparently suffers from some sort of animation lock. Meaning that if you're in the middle of an animation, um, the majority of your Hotbar spells will not do anything. You'll push a button and then you'll just be pushing a button. Nothing will actually happen. So I kind of failed to mention that earlier. I apologize. You don't actually need to use Inflame from the uh, the spell uh, mouse spell mode, but um, Force Push is a must for that to work. Because um, what I was doing, what the what, what I was doing there was I was inflaming those um, undead in that circle, but I needed to actually do another Inflame in order to kill them. So, to prevent them from getting knocked outside of the circle, I had to force push them to uh, cancel their knockback animation. There, I didn't need to do that, but it's kind of whatever. Undead that are outside of the arena actually die instantly as soon as they hit um, no health. So the undead, are, the arena, and the un, the undead in the arena are actually pretty weird. In retrospect, again, it's almost more pretty self-explanatory stuff. Sometimes you can get lucky if you are uh, good enough with your movement. You can actually roll on top of the uh, the handrail. And then you can just sit in prison for a little bit because you've been a bad boy, apparently. Gives you time to reflect on... Uh, your run thus far. Temper, Tibbs, temper. You should keep all that energy for later. You'll need it then. <laughs> oh, and don't try any of that funny will stuff. It won't work in here. The boss made sure of that. This is also the uh, place where playing in a different language from English will actually save you time. Because this is all spoken dialogue, it's not in the confines of a cutscene. So it's not skippable, unfortunately. Um, but it can be spoken faster in a language other than English. So, pretty much, um, I don't know the numbers for Russian, but every other language available through Steam that actually changes the um, spoken dialogue is faster than English. With French being the fastest at saving 34 seconds, in comparison. But I believe Russian is also faster than English. I just don't have any any um numbers off the top of my head at all. It's too cool to mention. Still, at least you get a good look at this place. Cleans more than books and furniture. This is also, um, I may have mentioned this before, but this is also a good spot to take a break, step away for a moment, 
Go to the bathroom. Get yourself some water. And we like you. Lose, and you get around in the torture chamber. That sounds fun. Yes, sounds fun. <laughs> Let me hear it. And, uh, spoiler alert, there is actually no conceivable way to get the key on year number one of Bargate Prison. Three, two, one. The game is literally coded so that you cannot get it on year one. So, interestingly, you actually do have the option of losing the first race. And in comparison, it's only like 10 seconds or so slower because of cutscenes and not having to do the uh, home minigame and such. Keep running, scum! Move it, move it, move it! Move it! Move it, move it, move it! Keep running, scum! That way, you great big Balverin turn! Bravo! We Welcome to my... If you roll during the transition to, um, or rather, when the screen is completely black, you can actually get a free roll and you won't increase that sound meter, or that movement meter. Because it essentially only increases when you're moving. The ball. <clears throat> the spirited sparrow. Click that away. Escape, escape with the cutscene. Continue skipping cutscenes. Well, 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 here we are again, eh? Stay in there, and I'll get to you in a moment. You might have noticed there's a few less of you this year. <laughs> I wonder what happened to them, eh? Yeah, a lot of things in this run are pretty self-explanatory, but some other things are just kind of nuanced. Oh, you survived. Another year, another race. But we gotta get into the warden's office. We gotta get that key. And a lot of things you just kind of have to get a feel for. Look lively, scum. Time to move out. It's race time. And you'd better put on a good show. Some of us have bet a lot of money on you. Win, and we like you. Lose, and you get around in the torture chamber. That sounds fun. Yes, sounds fun. <laughs> Let me hear it. Three, two, one. Have to win this race. Faster, 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 faster. Way, you useless film. Faster, 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 faster. Get a move on, you ugly maggot. Keep running, scum. You again. The recital. <laughs> Gray is the prettiest color. Oh, gray is the prettiest color. Oh, gray is the prettiest color. So I was actually toggling my sneak on and off. So I could just move just a, a hair faster. The warden has lost his key. It's up to you if you want to try doing it. Kind of like quickly toggle it on and, on and off and back on. Does save a little bit of time. Just gotta be careful with it. Don't bother with any of the other chests in here, just with this one. Sometimes you'll need to force push that guard away from the door so you can actually target it. Sometimes this floor up there is really sticky, and it will kill your rushes. As soon as you enter this room, just hit a, hit uh, your interact key once, because you're you're automatically targeting the lever. Stop 
Force Push is also good for, for helping with movement as well, if, in case you haven't noticed already. Because it can knock enemies away from you and such. Go ahead and apply multi arrow here if you want. Go ahead and use inflame immediately there. If you're lucky, you should be able to get um, two of the tentacles. Make your way over to where the other ones are, and the other two. You can feel free to punch the kraken in the face if you want, and just laugh at how ridiculous that sounds. Now these tentacles will take two in flames to kill. Also, your mom thinks these barriers are connected to this thing. And then one good multi-arrow at the end with all of your uh, maxed out uh, prowess will dispatch him. You still think those barriers are kind of connected to that thing. So I actually got rid of that um, second to last charge of multi-arrow, and uh, I'll explain why that is in a uh, little bit further down the line. So the quickest way to get to the Ancient Callus Gate is just to go to Arrow Fields. Get uh, screwed over by rushing towards a traitor and then actually getting stuck on the hillside there. Don't do that. So... We're actually pretty pretty good on will potions. You have a couple different options that you can use to uh, dispatch those undead. Uh, generally, we just use Inflame, but you can go after them with melee as well, and Berserk. With Sword of Aeons and Max Berserk, you sh probably should be able to just um, kill them in one shot, but um, I know for a fact that you can do that with Solus as well. So again, some more pretty self-explanatory stuff. Bit of a dialogue there with the guildmaster. After you've done that, just go to Hook Coast. I just force pushed a seagull out from the wall. Yes, there is a seagull in that ga in this game, which I personally love showing off. Absolute unit. So 
So I actually have a video on the maze fight. Um, it shows off um, timings and such for Solus. I'm going to try and do it for Aeons here, because with Berserk 4 you actually can use uh, Sword of Aeons just fine. Might want to watch the video in slow motion, though. This one, anyway. Use force push to cancel his death animation. Like I said, I have a video that goes into pretty good detail about... Um, that fight, so again, I didn't want to spend too much time on it. And I will have that video linked as well. Get that cutscene. Roll over here. <clears throat> Jack has to be st so this whole split is literally just uh, RNG incarnate coupled with movement. The game can be nice, it can also be mean. You just kind of have to play the hand that you're dealt. And just remember to uh, rush in doubt rather than, uh, or rather roll in doubt rather than uh, rush and get screwed over. What the heck did I... Wow. Never had a minion spawn there before. For some reason I thought he spawned out of bounds. Because I didn't even see him. Actually, something you should probably do on that last focus site is actually make your way, make like you're going into um, the prison path. Because trying to roll towards the focus site usually doesn't uh, trigger the cutscene as fast for some reason. Alright, and the Jack 1 fight is really not that bad. Gotta dispatch the minions first here. There are the melee ones and then there are the dreadlings. Alright. Okay. Basically, you wanna just push Jack's health to the second phase as quickly as you can. And then, um,. I personally use Force Push to avoid him um, getting stuck in the middle and going invisible. And if he does that, you can just um, use Inflame your in, yeah Inflame your way to victory. Um, you can actually dodge these energy waves and those energy balls and such while charging your bow shot. But um, max accuracy and such, um, just yeah. Fun fact about multi-arrow, the last charge of it deals double damage for some reason. Also, you want to make sure that you go ahead and hard target and kill your sister if you're going to be going with a full Aeons route. And if you are going with a full Aeons route and you actually are doing um, 
Max Berserk after Arena, you can actually just go ahead and go to Bowerstone South and roll out of the gate here. Cutscene will trigger and you'll just automatically be plonked over here. Go ahead and just talk to the store, don't bother doing the summon clip. It does not save any time. So hold E while you're skipping this cutscene, and you'll be blocking, and that actually unlocks your movement, and you want to just follow these patterns. Now there is something that you can do for um, this next puzzle coming up, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to do it normally. Now these these puzzles are all actually pretty open ended, in fairness. Just as long as you actually do the uh, kill and save order that I'm doing, that's the thing that really matters. And then there's another convenient teleport there to hook us. Just go ahead and do that. <clears throat> also, if you did get Solus and you haven't equipped it already, feel free to do that here. Because this is one of those points where it makes it actually considerably easier. If you are not used to using heavy weapons, though, that is something you're going to need to get used to. If you want to go with Solus at all. Um, if it's your first, like, few runs, you can actually just go ahead and run up the lighthouse. Don't need to roll your way up there, but rolling your way up there is faster. If you're doing it right. So, Solus actually makes that a lot easier because you can literally just one-shot that guy with a multi-strike. And you'll be, you'll be good to go. That's with uh, Berserk 4, of course. That was an accidental kick. So these guys are impervious to physical damage while they're charging up their lightning balls. You can damage them with inflame, but that's not a whole lot of damage because they have a whole lot of health. You have reached very famous status. But like if you were on the cusp of killing them and they started charging up their ball lightning, you can actually just um, sometimes use inflame to finish them off. Okay, so for the Ice Troll fight, you want to just back off first. Once he's no longer, like, start counting his punches for after he's done with his uh, Ice Troll punches. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Go ahead and finish him off. So that fight is scripted. Or just... I think it's just the Ice Troll in general. The Ice Troll in general is just scripted to um, require uh, a specific series of actions or specific action in order to actually start taking damage again, much like the Wasp Queen was. Uh, I'm not going to do the teleport strat here. I'm just going to do regular movement. There is a teleport strat that you can do here. But it's also like really easy to mess up if you're not careful. Because it's actually pretty precise in terms of what you actually do. I say I'm not going to do that, and I'm moving towards the spot like I'm actually going to do it. I'm too used to actually doing it, so I, for, I apologize for that. Hmm. 
Make your way here in the snow spire. I'm gonna go back to Archon Shrine. Make your way back to the northern foot northern foothills, and then we are going to go to this wonderful place called Necropolis. Because we're going to be robbing some more graves. Now, um, what you see here is not likely to be what you're going to find in your runs. Because the, uh, the location of the names of these on these graves is randomized pretty much every time you enter here. For the first time in a run. And we're actually going to be looking for uh, three specific names. Um, we'll know where to look as um, they're indicated by green dots on the map. So, I Love It was actually the first name, one of the three names that we're looking for. <clears throat> we are then looking for T Fung and George W. Okay, so this grave right here is a bit of a pain to try and read. Unfortunate that it was actually that one. In some cases, you are probably going to have to, like, actually just bite the bullet and try digging there. Because of how painful it is to try and get it highlighted so you can read it. Read it. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much how one's first go with these summoners will uh, go for the, yeah. That's that's pretty normal, I, I, I dare to say. Um, you need to kill both of those minions and those summoners to finish the quest. As long as you remember the fact that Berserk is pretty broken in that you are doing a lot of damage and you are literally immortal, you'll be fine. So that is a double autosave. Go ahead and like mash your interact key. Get rid of that dialogue box and then go back to uh, Archon Shrine. Make sure you go to Archon Shrine first. Don't go to Nothole Glade first like I've done a number of times. A lot of the end of this run is just teleportations and small little bursts of combat. You're gonna hard target Thunder and punch him. Go into Berserk, cancel your animation, pull your weapon out, multi-strike. And it's literally the same with Aeons as well. The Thunder Fight doesn't, isn't affected by your weapon. It takes the same amount of time, regardless. Another convenient teleport to Archon Shrine. Go ahead and do that. The fastest way to trigger the fight with Briar here is just to use Force Push. Skip the cutscene, get rid of the uh, quest prompt. Going to Berserk basically is uh, as soon as she does the, uh, the lighting shift. Force Push usually dispatches her clones and singles her out without too much of an issue. Um, sometimes, however, she can just decide to screw you over and her clones won't just die, which is unfortunate.
and then um, you do need to go to the Heroes Guild at some point, but um, for the sake of speed, we're actually going to be going for um, going to Litchfield first. And we're going to be making our way toward basically pretty much the end of this bridge. Then we'll go to the guild. Welcome back, sir. This Once we've triggered that cutscene, we are able to just recall back to the old graveyard path. And since we went so far into the map, we are actually closer to the uh, Circle of the Dead entrance. And we are targeting it automatically, so you can just use your interact key. Now, if you are using Aeons, you won't be able to do a one cycle on Nostro. Unless you get a, um, a lucky cleave-in, in which case it's a faux one cycle. But either way, it's not super important. But it is a little bit faster, obviously, to get a one cycle. And the way I try to do that... Pull my sword out immediately. Use in flame and then go to town on Nostra there. A lot easier to do with Soulless Greatsword than it is with Aeons. Another uh, convenient teleport to um, Archon Shrine. Definitely take it. So you actually have another bit of free movement here with... Um, that black screen. So you can actually get a bit of free movement going on there. And then, final battle. Um, just wait until you've actually gotten your multi-strike off to attack Jack here. If you are trying to swing at him and he's not, you're not hitting him, then you've beaten him. Go ahead and throw the mask. And that's basically it. Um, I hope that serves as a decent enough guide for... Um, those who are wanting to pick up Fable TLC any percent for the 12 hour challenge this year or pretty much ever but um, if there are any questions um, I'll have a link to the Fable speedrunning discord that's the best source of information and the easiest way to get your questions at, uh, answered um, you can reach out to myself, Edom, any of the other runners, Raheem, Cannibal, um, Avdus. They, they, they all are more than happy to help with getting things <laughs> answered and making things clearer for people. But um, thank you for watching. I hope uh, this serves well.